G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and in today's episode of Getting Started in the Horus Heresy, we're going to be doing a little bit of list building. Uh, probably not going to cover all 18 legions, uh, uh, but we're just going to go through this, and essentially I'm going to make it up as I go. Now the way this works is, I've done a few of these before, I used to do them for Heresy 1.0, and I've created these little charts in paint that is full of all the different stuff that you're commonly going to see in the Horus Heresy. So with that chart, I put it to the side and we pick uh, from that chart and we make up a list. In this list, we have several different tiers. So the very top row here is the must take. So this is going to be your minimum force organization requirements. You're talking one HQ, two troops, that kind of thing. The level two is the anti heavy infantry slash monstrous creatures. Now with the change to 2.0, you can you can probably slot dreadnoughts as well into that category. Uh, dreadnoughts and anti tank also makes up level three. Now, in the previous edition, I would say that being able to kill dreadnoughts was lower down on the tier rankings. In this edition, they are so strong. Honestly, you could put them in every single category. And of course, level three is anti-air, anti-flyers. Uh, and the idea here is that essentially, whenever we build an army, no infantry unit should be put in that's only there to do a single job. If it's doing one job and one alone, it's not very useful to you because it can't multitask because what happens if it comes across a situation where, well, it's, it's just useless. So for example, if you have a unit and its whole job is to kill flying units and it can't kill anything else and you go against someone who doesn't have any flying units, what does your unit do then? It's kind of wasting your points. Now we're not trying to talk about making lists that are gonna kick every other list's ass at all costs, always gonna win the game, yada yada. No, no, no. But we, we also don't wanna waste our points and more than anything, we don't wanna waste our money. You have to build lists in a smart way so that you get the most bang for your buck uh, when it comes to creating forces for the Horus Heresy. So with that in mind, we take our tiers here and we're going to be looking, especially the anti-heavy infantry, we're, we're talking Terminators there. What can kill Terminators? What can kill Dreadnoughts? That kind of thing. So let's start out with an example list, okay? And this is the sort of list that I would expect a person who, you know, who is fresh to the game, the sort of list that they're going to play. So I would pick up some sort of Praetor Commander, okay? Praetor Commander for your list. In this case, it's the Cataphracti and Power Armor uh, Legion Praetors from Forge World, but there are, of course, plastic ones that you can get from Games Workshop. On top of that, you're probably going to have the box set so you're probably going to have a couple characters out of that already. I don't really like those characters because you only need one power armored character, really. Uh, we're also going to throw in a couple of tactical squads. We're going to throw in two of those because you're going to get them in that basic set. Now, objective play is important, but it's not as important as it was in the last edition. So we've got two squads of tactical marines at two HQs. One of them should be a Terminator armored HQ. And the reason why is one of the other things we got in our basic box set was we got Cataphracti Terminators. So we want to take full advantage of that. Now, our Cataphracti Terminators, they're going to be performing multiple roles in the army. So they're going to sit right here on our force organization chart. Now, we don't want to have just five. I think this needs to be 10. So double stack full 10 models and the reason we want 10 is we need them to have enough numbers to be able to survive fighting against the enemy obviously you want thunder hammers in there you want a lot of thunder hammers but i generally will suggest two chain fists i don't think that uh, heavy flamers or auto cannons are necessarily required in fact i think they're a waste of points uh, because you just don't have enough firepower you know if you go back to something like 3rd edition, two auto cannons in a squad of 10 terminators was a lot of fighter power. However, this game where there are infantry blobs of 20 marines, two auto cannons does not go far. And if you're using something like heavy flamers, it makes things like charging a lot harder because you're killing off the models closest to you a lot of the time. Uh, because if anyone is smart, they're going to take models from the front. 
uh, when they're taking hits through your flamers because they want to prevent you charging and leave you sitting in the open and helpless next turn. So 10 Terminators that are going to actually pair up with the HQ model in Terminator Armor, who should probably be your Praetor. He's going to have a lot of survivability there because he's going to have 4 wounds, he's going to have that 2 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save, and he's going to have that hardened armor ability where he's going to be re-rolling his failed armor saves against blasts and template weapons thanks to being heavy. So they'll go hand in hand. Now you also got other squads of tactical marines in your basic box set. And I think, honestly, probably the best thing to do is to take one of those 10-man squads and give them las cannons. And they also will sit in this coverall area here where they're able to kill terminators instantly thanks to las cannons and they're also able to kill tanks very easily thanks to las cannons and they pose a threat to dreadnoughts with las cannons the terminators do as well they'll have a lot of attacks with power fists or i think thunder hammers and chain fists would be the better way to go but they are going to lose numbers doing so so your primary anti-tank anti-heavy infantry unit is going to be a Tactical squad that's been upgraded into a Legion heavy support squad with LAS cannons. So, this is what I would call your basic army build because from here, you garnish this with flavor. You've got one elite's choice there, you've got two troops' choices, and one heavy choice. So things you might uh, add to the army now when you're going up in points. So, I think one of the most important things that any Legion wants to add to their army when they're doing you know a slow grow is you want to start adding apothecaries in now you're going to put them on your troops choices to basically extend the life of those troops choices especially if they're holding objectives if you can get them into your legion heavy support squads great the whole point of them is to increase survivability Another thing that people will start doing this edition, and we're seeing it in small doses, but because they're Forge World sort of specific models, we're not seeing too much of it yet. And that is, if I can find them on my big chart to the right, because this is, there's a lot of units in that chart, uh, we want to be introducing Recon Marines. So let's see if I can find some here. There are so many models in this chart, it's ridiculous. By the way, this, this is not getting edited out. I am leaving this in exactly as recorded today. Because why not? Recon Marines, where are you? There they are. Things are never easy to find sometimes. All right. Probably want to get up to a 10-man squad of Recon Marines. I say a 10-man squad because that's going to give you sufficient numbers. It's giving you a third scoring unit in the army. And of course, 10 Nemesis sniper rifles is absolutely nothing to sniff at. Now, I'm not saying Legion Scouts. I'm saying Recon Marines for a particular reason here. Uh, they're quite good. When it comes to your HQ choices, if you want to expand on those, I think something like a Master of Signals is also a good choice. So the Master of Signals, and I'll get rid of the other HQ choices because they're really not too important to this build. So the Master of Signals is going to attach to your Legion Heavy Support Squad with their LAS Cannons because he's going to give them plus one ballistic skill thanks to his, uh, his actual Nuncio Vox uh, abilities. He's also going to be able to, oh actually that's his Cognus Signum, he's going to use his Nuncio Vox to gift his leadership to one friendly unit per turn, which will probably be something like your tactical or your recon marines. So if they are forced to take a leadership check, they've got a little bit of, you know, uh, better chance of passing because they're going to be leadership nine instead of leadership seven or eight if they have a sergeant. Now, where do you go from here? Well, now you can start looking at things like armor. So do you want to go for anti-tank? I honestly don't think anti-tank is that flash or that crash hot this edition um, but i think a good supplemental unit for killing things like power armor is probably going to be taking a whirlwind scorpius so we're going to chuck that in the anti-infantry anti-heavy infantry category 
So that's now two of our heavy support slots taken. We've used up three of our troop slots. We've used up two of our HQ slots and we've used up two of our elite slots. One for apothecaries and one for terminators. Now what do we do? Well, we could look at taking a transport option. So this is where something like the Spartan comes in. So you might want to put your terminators in a Spartan tank. So then we take our Spartan tank, which can also give us more supplemental firepower. And we tag that onto our terminators as a transport option for them. It might also be worth taking because it's pretty cheap in points and it gives you extra mobility as well as providing an obstacle on the battlefield. And that's Rhino, because you can put an Apothecary in with these squads in the Rhinos now in this edition. So one of the ways to use a Rhino is not just using it as a transport for your troops. Remember, a Rhino is a tank. It is a vehicle. It is an object that blocks line of sight to units on the other side of it. So sometimes it's best to use the Rhino simply as a barrier or a wall or a shield to protect your infantry from a line of sight of the enemy. So that's a very effective in 2.0. So for example, you have character in a squad of basic Marines and the enemy has say a bunch of Nemesis sniper rifles, like their own recon squads. You set up a couple of these rhinos back to back facing their side out to the enemy, all of a sudden, until they've killed those rhinos, you have an excellent line of sight blocker, which may protect your HQ from being shot. Very important thing to try. Uh, and then, obviously, that Spartan may be taken as a dedicated transport in this situation. It could also be taken as a separate heavy support slot. It just depends on the particular circumstances of your build. Now, if you're going for a Lord of War, I don't have any particular tanks that I'm a huge fan of this edition for Wars of War. They just get very pricey very quickly, and this is far too low a point to be looking at that sort of thing. So I'm just not going to add it to the list. But there is one thing that we haven't added yet to this list, which is a very, very strong unit, and I think you all know where I'm going with this, and it's the Contemptor Dreadnought. So Contemptor Dreadnought... Obviously, it's just such an all-rounder, it's going right here on the chart as well. And I wouldn't be taking more than 1 per 1,000 points. At 1 per 1,000 points, it's already a very difficult proposition for your opponent because of the way the rules are written this edition for them to deal with. So if you follow this guide here and you buy these units and you use them in this particular way, you are going to have a viable, simple, easy-to-use list for your Legionaries Astartes. So I'll read this out one more time for you to all take in. Legion Praetor in Cataphracti Terminator Armor. Legion Master of Signals. 10-man Cataphracti Squad. Possibly with Spartan. Two 10-man Tactical Squads with two Apothecaries, one in each squad. Two Legion Rhinos. Takes are not great this edition, but again, line of sight blocker for 35 points is worth it. 10-man Legion Heavy Support Squad with LAS Cannons. Legion Whirlwind Scorpius. Two 5-man Legion Recon Squads or a single 10-man Legion Recon Squad. I suggest the latter. And a Contemptor Dreadnought. That's it. That is a basic Legion army. And from there, garnish it however you like. Fill out the points however you deem fit. Uh... It's entirely up to you, but this is my suggestion for a starting army. All right, so let's take a step back from here and let's look at Fota, the Fury of the Ancients. So the Fury of the Ancients is obviously absolute dog crap to go up against. And let's go through the basic build of one and how it works. So Fury of the Ancients was written by a madman, and the idea behind it is that you take a Dreadnought who replaces your basic HQ choice. So you get a Dreadnought first and foremost. And we're just going to label this HQ because that's what he is. So HQ Dreadnought. Then you have to take two Contempt of Talons for your troops' choices. So we're going to be looking at something like 1, 2 and 1, 2. So this is going to be the basic core of your army. Now, these are your scoring Contemptor Talons, and often you'll see them grow to, say, three Contemptors each. 
Now, each one of these contemptors is able to move independently on the battlefield. However, when they're deployed, they deploy within six inches of one another at the start of the game. From there, they go wherever you wish on the table, and every one of them can score. Every additional talent you add after this point is going to be a non-scoring unit. This is very important here. This means that if you want more scoring or such in the army, you have to start adding Marines in power armor to the force. So these particular forces here, I'd probably be looking at the polar opposite of what I suggested last edition. So in last edition, it was always give your Dreadnought two of the same concept of weapon, whether that's two close combat weapons, say Chain Fist, Power Fist, or whether it's two long-ranged anti-tank weapons weapons such as twin las cannons twin curious assault cannons twin volkite culverins etc well this edition you can have your cake and eat it too and it is just better to take a mixed loadout so one power fist and i'm going to say a gravis power fist in almost all situations is a great idea i'd probably make one of these four dreadnoughts that make up these two two dreadnought talents one of them should probably take two auto cannons, two twin linked auto cannons or gravis auto cannons I should say, because it will take a helical targeting array. That will give it interceptor and it will also allow it to form a decent threat to aircraft. So it can actually double up as a level three slot as well as a uh, basic requirement slot. Additionally to this now, we're going to be looking at including a bit of you know, a bit more hard hitting firepower into this force because we want to be taking, say, plasma cannons or multi melters on the other three troops' choice dreadnoughts, in addition to their Gravis Power Fist. The reason for this is, well, the plasma cannon on dreadnoughts for some reason is much bigger than other plasma cannons in the game, uh, in that it has a five inch blast. That makes it pretty decent at threatening infantry. So that's a good weapon there, especially for anti-horde, because you don't want your Dreadnought to be bogged down in close combat for 10 turns. So that's sort of a must-take on one of your Dreadnoughts. And of course, the multi melt is going to give you decent anti-tank without actually having to charge the tank, and it'll give you that ability to, you know, pop the transport, charge the contents type thing. Now, we're going to supplement all of this here with the Derrideo. Two Derrideos straight away as two separate choices and they actually are going to take up all three of these slots here because they're going to take the arachnus las cannons and we're probably going to give them the aeoli garlic aeoli missile launcher the ilos air defense missile launcher these dreadnoughts could take heavy flamers they could potentially take uh, a few other weapons there, maybe shrapnel heavy bolters, something like that. Depends on Legion, but we're just going to say they've got heavy bolters for their nipple guns. Now, they're taking the Arachnus Lads Cannons because they're fantastic anti-tank, fantastic anti-heavy infantry. They are good against Dreadnoughts. They're good against Flies. So it's an all-round weapon in all circumstances and situations. The heavy bolters are there just for eh, the sake of it. And... Of course, the missile launcher on the back is there because it's probably the best all-round missile weapon. Flyers are not going to be common this edition because vehicles are not good this edition, and flyers got a lot worse this edition, especially with the amount of interceptor floating around. Not all metas uh, areas are playing it in their meta. Not everyone is saturating the field with augury scanners, but in my particular area, they are. So keep that information in the back of your mind. Now, from here, we could look at taking, say, Leviathan Dreadnought for flavor, but honestly, more Contemptors will do the job better than a Leviathan Dreadnought. The points on a Leviathan is not actually justifying its uh, performance on the battlefield. So, let's treat this as a very basic Fury of the Ancients or photo list. This here is sort of that 1500 to 2000 points zone. The HQ Dreadnought is going to have a better invulnerable save. It's going to have better weapon skill. Um, it's just going to be better than a regular Contemptor Dreadnought. So it's a very dangerous thing. How do you fight this list? How do you kill it? Well, Thunder Hammers are useful because the amount of brutal attacks they make. But you're going to lose probably three Terminators at least taking down one Dreadnought per turn. So that's not a situation you want to find yourself in. Uh, Dreadnoughts are very, very nasty, very scary. I think Legion Heavy support squads with LAS cannons 
uh, one of the best units for dealing with them because especially with Master of Signals, you're going to hit on twos, wound on twos, they get to save on fives. You can very, very quickly kill a Dreadnought. But the distance these Dreadnoughts can cover means you don't have long to shoot at them before they get to you. Another really useful thing against Dreadnoughts is Graviton Weapons. So if you have a Legion which can just load out on Graviton Weapons, something like the Iron Hands, for example, full of Graviton Shredders, they will absolutely murderize Contempt of Dreadnoughts. But there's a particular list for one of the weakest Legions in the game, and that is my Salamanders. And this is my own personal list that I'm going to show you now. So this list that's coming up is what I call the Photo Pounder with Cheese, after the McDonald's Quarter Pounder with Cheese. So the way this list goes, it's pretty simple. For our HQ choice, we're going to have a Cataphracti Armoured Praetor. So I'm just going to scroll along and grab one off my chart. Okay, don't need the Power Armoured guy, so cut him away. Now, on top of him, we're going to have a bit of fun, because this is a Covenant of Fire Right of War army. So we're going to have one tactical support squad. Okay, and these guys are going to be armed with flamers. So I'm just going to highlight them in red border. So tactical support squad with flamers is a tr scoring troops choice uh, and a compulsory troops choice in a covenant of fire right of war for salamanders. Additionally to this, we want not one, but three squads of 10 pyroclasts, and we're going to be chucking these guys in Land Raider Proteus. Because they can take it as a dedicated transport. And we're going to be taking three of these squads. Every single unit here so far, except for the HQ, is a scoring troops choice with a line in this right of war. Now, additionally to all of this particular nastiness, we're going to supplement it with Legion Fire Drakes, who are going to be our anti-everything unit, and we want 10 of those bad boys. And they are going to have a Spartan as their ride. Like so. So, what we've got here is three sets of Gravis Laz Cannons on the Lamb Raider Proteus, as well as the Laser Destroyer Arrays on the Spartan. That's an awful lot of anti-tank slash anti-heavy infantry slash anti-dreadnought firepower. In addition, the Pyro class all count as having Strength 6 Heavy Flamers, as well as the option to fire them as Melter Guns. So that's 30 Melter Guns in my army here. Additionally, the Fire Drakes themselves, who will be joined by the Legion Praetor, are going to have Storm Shields and Thunder Hammers, the expensive loadout. That squad and their transport is a thousand points alone. So, big points here. But... They have a huge amount of survivability, thanks to the Rite of War. We're talking 5+, plus. it will not die on those guys, and they're going to be stubborn at Leadership 9, and it gets better because the uh, Warlord trait we're going to take on the HQ gives our entire army plus 1 leadership and immunity to Fear 1. So if that means that Night Lords are suddenly a lot worse, and we don't really care about Night Fight, which is pretty damn cool. So that's this basic army right here. Now, where do I go to expand this force? Well, I'm so glad you asked, hypothetical viewer, who hasn't turned off the video yet and made sure to do one of those like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm things that all the cool YouTubers talk about. So, and troops choices, I can actually take a predator squadron with this right of war, provided they're armed with entirely flamer weapons. So, three Predators armed with Inferno Cannons and Triple Heavy Flamers, because it's funny. And it's really doubling down on the theme of the list. And it also means that if you're Solar Auxilia, I've just created the most terrifying army on the planet, because everything in this army is a Strength 6 AP4 weapon, which is, you know, 
so are Auxilia. Uh, screwed against that kind of firepower. <laughs> uh, literally, firepower. Um, and there's one more unit that I add to this list. Uh, if I can find it in my list of units off to the side here. It's oh so large and oh so hard to find units in. But in short, it's a Sicker and Venator. I just can't find it. It's all these units. Too many units to scroll through. Well, it's a Venator, but I'm just going to chuck down a Sikarin because I don't know where the Venator is, and I don't want to leave you all hanging forever. The Sikarin Venator in here is a bit of a meme unit, so it's obviously good anti-tank, uh, but because you can upgrade Heavy Flamers to... Uh, sorry, Heavy Volters to Heavy Flamers and Salamanders for free, uh, it's going to be armed with three Dragon's Breath Heavy Flamers. So <laughs> it's a bit of a meme machine. Uh, which I think is funny. So this here is the photo pounder with cheese. This is a list I think will, points for points, probably slaughter most Fury of the Ancient lists. Um, I've had a chance to play it in smaller scale here uh, against Fury of the Ancients, and it did exactly what it was meant to in the advertising because it's just the sheer amount of firepower that this army puts out. It's insanity uh, for anti-tank, anti-vehicle, anti-dreadnought. But there are things that will kill it quite easily. Uh, anything full of heavy infantry, especially battle-hardened heavy infantry, this army can't do a lot to it. It's entirely reliant on the Laz Cannons, on the Land Raiders, and the Spartan, and the Fire Drakes. And of course, you only have so many of your 730-odd points of Fire Drakes that you can actually throw at the enemy before you're out of models. So that is the Salamander's Photo Pounder with Cheese. So let's take all that away now. And move on to another list. Let's look at, say, Dark Angels. So Dark Angels are a bit of a funny one because this is a legion where I think you'll get a lot of use uh, out of taking... We're going to go for more of a Pride of the Legion type force here. So we're going to start out with our Legion Praetors. And in particular, we want to go for the Terminator Armoured Legion Praetor. So again, you're sensing a bit of a theme here, uh, and it's heavy infantry, but I assure you we will move away from heavy infantry on the next list to a different kind of heavy infantry. No. <laughs> Alright, so Dark Angels, Inner Circle, Knight Zenobium as a command squad. It's actually going to be uh, Deathwing Companion Squad. Okay, And I'm going to take the Knight Zenobium as a troop's choice in Pride of the Legion here. We could go Deathwing Rite of War, potentially. But it's not going to be the Knight Cenobium. It's actually going to be the other version of the Knight Cenobium from the Legacies of the Age of Darkness PDF. Because it's something a little bit different. They are a very strong unit. Now, the Command Squad of Terminators that's going with this Praetor here is going to be a squad of... Uh, Deathwing Companions in Terminator Armor. It saves you having to buy the Aegis Shields for them. You can just buy them the, the Great Swords, and that means you're not going to have your Praetor sniped out in this army. Very, very effective, regardless of whether you make a traditional army or a Pride of the Legion army. Now, Pride of the Legion is not the best list you can take in the game, but it is pretty damn good. So from here, I'm just going to say you can put more regular Inner Circle Knight Cenobium or Deathwing Terminators into the rest of your troops' choices. And then, of course, to top it all off, well, you probably want to be looking at, if you're going to keep this sort of first company type theme, uh, you want to be looking at getting a, at least one Contemptor into here. And this is a very, very strong list, okay? Because everything that's in here <laughs> is really occupying pretty much all of these slots except for Anti-Flyer. So get a Contemptor into there. I'd probably suggest getting a Derrideo into there just for that occasional anti-air firepower. So again, Arachnus Laz Cadens. Just pretend the other weapons don't exist, basically, um, for a Derrideo. And this right here is going to be a very strong and effective, but very slow list. So in order to balance out some of the speed that we're lacking here, we want to get some Legion Sabres into this force. Now, until these are in plastic, financially, this is not viable tactic. 
Um, but we're going to be looking at probably going with the uh, snub, Anvil of Snub Auto Cannons for the main gun. I don't really suggest the, the Neutron Blaster. Too few shots, too little chance with its one little shot. Of, it's a pea shooter. You know, you'd be better off taking a Venator if you want that kind of firepower. These things are a flanking unit. Snub Auto Cannon or the Volkite Saker, go for gold, okay? Those are the better weapon choices. And this is the sort of thing that I'd be looking at with this particular force. So that's a Pride of the Legion slash Deathwing style Dark Angels force. And, you know, there are other units you could put into there, like more Deathwing Companions in Power Armor or something. Um, put a Legion Champion in there and team them up with him or a Chaplain. You know, there's some nasty ways you can do this. And, of course, you can add transports to move them around faster. So let's move away from there now. And let's look at something like... Let's go Night Lords. So Night Lords... Um, I'd probably take the Night Wards, Night Fighting, Rite of War. You'd just be silly not to. Uh, and you're going to load up on at least two squads of Night Raptors. Just so good, so damn strong in this army. Uh, in addition to that, let's get some... I believe it's Terror Assault Rider War, and I'll just quickly So remember your Night Raptors are scoring troops in the Terror Assault Rider War, but so are Terror Squads. So we're gonna get Terror Squad in there. Probably armed with Volkite to really make the most of them. Okay. Um I'm going to avoid things like Terminators, Contacar especially in this particular force. I just don't see the need for them personally. Um, I'm probably also going to... I'm just going to put down a interesting unit choice here. So we're going to have the Praetor and a Master of Signals. And I do want to use the both of these. So I'll split them in half. So the champion model is going to be our Praetor. We want to give him a jump pack, and we want to get him in with one of these squads of Night Raptors if we can. In addition to all of this, we are going to have the Laz Cannon Heavy Support Squad as well, who, again, are going to help us out with killing the Heavy Infantry, and we're going to have the Master of Signals. He's going to be working with these bad boys. Okay, So their job is going to be killing Heavy Infantry, and remember, it's night fighting, and you're going to see in the dark, the other guy is not. If you go Ballistic Skill 5, you are going to have your own run of the battlefield with your Legion Heavy Support Squad here. Your Night Raptors are going to move forward under the cover of darkness, or deep strike in, and just go to town at killing infantry, okay? Your uh, Terra Squad is going to be probably hanging back in the back lines a bit more, maybe playing into the midfield bit of a speed hump for the enemy. Uh, and, of course, we're going to top this off with a Legion Recon squad because they are always very, very good. So this is going to give us four scoring troops choices. Two squads are heading into the enemy's deployment zone, one that's staying in yours, and one that's moving into the middle of the table and just acting as a general harassment unit. On top of this, again, Contemptor, always bring a Contemptor, is going to be as true in 2.0 as it was in Heresy 1.0. And same thing, it's covering multiple different slots on the, the table uh, when it comes to playing this game. Another thing that might be you know, a bit of fun, a bit of use to you is, I think, taking a Xiphon. It's going to be fast, able to keep up with your army. It's going to be good at doing damage to some vehicles, some dreadnoughts. It's probably the cream of the crop when it comes to flyers. All the others are just over points uh, for what they actually bring to you. And you don't need something like a Storm Eagle, for example. No, a Xiphon is cheap enough, plentiful enough that it's going to do the job fine. Um, I also would suggest that when it comes to vehicles, you have a route you can head down here. You can either go, I want to add proper armor to this force now because I filled out all the infantry. Uh, and you can then have some fun tanks added, like, say, Sikorinarchus. Uh, 
you probably don't need a whirlwind scorpius because you're really fishing for the strength eight attacks that are going to kill the enemy heavy infantry any enemy light infantry like tactical squads if your night raptors don't kill them you deserve to lose the game or maybe you go you know what no i just want more infantry in this force and that's where things can get a bit fun because i would say then that it's time to start looking at destroyers so getting some destroyers into the force destroyers are quite good this edition they were quite good at the end of last edition as well and i would probably also get a moritat into the squad with them so remembering your night lords you're going to be benefiting from your outnumbering so destroyers bulky units 10-man squad uh, and adding the Moritat to them, you're going to be able to outnumber a squad of 20 tactical marines. And you'll go rag grenades. And on top of the rag grenades, you have your bonus rolls uh, from a Talent for Murder. This is a very, very deadly army. The downside here is good luck making this without utilizing a ton of Forge World at this point in time. Because at the time of recording... We haven't been teased with any infantry units in plastic for pretty much any of this stuff. Uh, so it is a mostly resin force. But hey, I'm sure there are ways uh, that one is <coughs> trying to <coughs> able to come across the units that they need to play this army. So that's a Night Lord's force right there. And you could make something very, very similar for the Raven Guard. But swapping out the uh, Night Raptors for Dark Furies, swapping out, say, Recon squads for Bordathan, uh, getting a squad of uh, Deliverers, perhaps, into there. Very, very strong little army. Okay, let's go for another army that everyone is absolutely going to love. And I think this is possibly the strongest army in 30k. We're going to go Imperial Fists. So... Straight out the bat, we want to take the uh, Right of War Stone Gauntlet. So, again, without a doubt, this is the one Right of War I think can pretty much stand up to anything and everything, um, for better or worse, in the game. Now, the Stone Gauntlet Right of War, it revolves around taking breaches, but in particular, Phalanx Waters. Now, I don't think I have Phalanx Waters in my chart that I put to the side. Um, but that's okay. As long as you know that I mean them, I can just simulate them by putting Breaches into the Force. So, we're going to go... 1, 2, 3 squads of Breaches which are actually Phalanx Waters. I don't like the models for the Phalanx Waters, so the Breacher models would be my preference personally. And of course, supplemented with Apothecaries, because you have Heart of the Legion. So when you are sitting on an objective, you're going to have re-rollable invulnerable saves, as well as four plus feel no pain. You want this. Now, you see I've got a HQ choice up here. So one of these HQ choice is going to be the Castellan Consul. Now what does the Castellan Consul give you? He gives you scoring on your Legion Heavy Support Squads, of which you're going to take one with Laz Cannons, probably, and one with Heavy Bolters. Or Assault Cannons, wink wink, definitely take your Assault Cannons. Because the Assault Cannons are going to benefit from your Legion trait, and they'll be hitting on twos. Very, very strong. The banner is not a banner, we're going to call that Fafnir Banner, because it's Fafnir Ran who's going to be your Warlord in this particular list. Now what are we going to do for some killing power in this list? What are we going to take that can stand up to the nastiest stuff in any other legion? We are going to take Huskulls, represented here by two five-man sets of Cataphracti. So Huskulls, for those who don't know, are armed with Solarite Gauntlets. They are going to be striking at Strength 10. That means they instant kill Custodes, as well as Galvorback, as well as any Legion Terminator. Death Shroud, Deliverers, both of whom are battle-hardened 
Toughness 4 Terminators. It takes Strength 10 to kill them. These guys have it. And on top of that, they get to have their cake and eat it too because they have a 3 plus invulnerable save. So, add that up with the rest of this force. Of course, Fafnir Ran is going to join one of your Fikes Water Squadrons. This is an incredibly brutal army. Now, if you want to take it up to the next tier, you add a single Derradeo for anti-air. Because, why not? And then, you're just going to literally rinse and repeat more Phalanx Water Squads. Yeah, okay, they only have one attack each. Oh, didums. When you get charged by those really nasty enemy squads, which are weapon skill 5 and have a million attacks, yeah, that's going to suck, except for, hang on a minute, you are defensive grenades. On top of that, you're weapon skill 5 when you get charged because you're Phalanx Waters. Ah, see how that works. And, of course, Fafnir Rand is going to give you other bonuses. So that is, I think, the strongest base list in the game. Because you can still buy transports for this. You can buy a bunch more tanks for this. You've, you've used up three heavy support slots. But that's only if you take the Derrideo. There's nothing stopping you from taking, say, a squadron of tanks in place of the Derrideo. Uh, I would definitely look at adding sabers to this. Because you need some speed, some maneuverability in this force. Um, but it is a very, very deadly force nonetheless. Uh, and of course, it's the Stone Gauntlet. It's just, just a horrible list to play against. And everything in this is just scoring, except for the Huskals. It's insanity. So, yeah, one to avoid right there. So, that's a bunch of our basic lists down pat right there. I'm going to come back and do another episode of this later on, but we've already passed the 40 minute mark, and I've given you a, a taster, a tester here, of different options available to you. Next time out, I think we'll do some more traitor focused stuff. I'm thinking maybe Elf Legion, Word Bearers, maybe Death Guard next time out and if i can fit it in we'll go for iron hands as well so yeah anyway that's it that's me mac with the outer circle this is the first in the heresy part four series where we're going through and this is the building of lists we're going to go through and pick out conversion parts and things like that for each of the legions as well so keep an eye out for those videos we'll be talking 3d printed parts uh third party parts that kind of thing anyway Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to catch you on the next one.